My name is Dr. Laura Meredith. I'm an assistant professor in the School of Natural Resources and the Environment, and I am the director of Rainforest Research here at Biosphere 2. And you're joining us now on Biosphere Live for this week's uh, edition, where we are discussing upcoming research efforts in this tropical rainforest biome. And uh, we have some very exciting experimentation that's coming up this year, where we're going to ask this tropical forest how it cycles carbon and in particular how it cycles fragrant compounds in uh, in the forest and these are compounds that that we can smell that are organic compounds that are in the air that both plants and microbes produce and together with colleagues from around the world we will probe this ecosystem to discover new insights that can only be discovered here at, at this unique experimental facility so please add your comments and your questions as we go um, and I'll just answer them as, as we go. So plants, we know, uh, fix carbon from the atmosphere. And some of that carbon they use to grow, and they have to burn some, out, some more of that carbon to do the work to grow. And plants also release some carbon back to the atmosphere that are volatile organic compounds. And these can be complex, they can be simple, um, but they're called VOCs, volatile organic compounds, and many of these are fragrant. They're compounds that the human nose can actually detect. These are important to understand because they have important uh, impacts on atmospheric chemistry, the quality of the atmosphere, the ability of the atmosphere to seed and produce clouds, and also the radiative properties of our atmosphere. So we would like to know how forests are producing VOCs uh, and how can we better predict and model that process. In this forest, however, there are also, there's also microbial life that we really cannot ignore. It's covering every surface every leaf, root, um, and stem, and we know that there are a lot of microorganisms in soils. So it's estimated that in a, in a gram of soil, there's over a billion cells of micro, microorganisms, and these have immense capabilities to carry out different types of metabolism, some of which release these volatile organic carb compounds, VOCs, back to the atmosphere. And it's actually VOCs from microbes that produce the smell of soil. It's a compound called geosmin that's an organic compound. And so we can attribute our, our love for the smell of soil to microbial life and VOC cycling. Scientists, we have a lot of questions about which microorganisms specifically produce which types of VOCs. Can we look at the genes and the genomes of microorganisms and predict which ones they're going to produce? And what sort of environmental conditions dictate whether or not there's more or less VOC cycled by microorganisms. So we're going to use this laboratory here to ask these questions in a really exciting campaign uh, that we're planning for the fall. And our colleagues and, and we recognize that this is a really unique facility for carrying out this campaign. And so for anyone who's just joining now, my name is Dr. Laura Meredith and I'm talking about research in the rainforest biome at Biosphere 2. So the unique properties of the Biosphere 2 rainforest uh, that really help us study VOC cycling here are threefold. First, this atmosphere is just a fraction of the size of what most rainforests have. It's about 100 feet tall, and so it's very, very sensitive to the type of plant and microbial VOC cycling in this forest. This means that we can use instruments to measure compounds that would usually be below our detection limits, um, and so it's a very highly sensitive system for us to carry out that kind of work. Second, the glass blocks a lot of the UV radiation. This type of radiation is important in driving the chemistry that usually removes VOCs from the atmosphere. And because we have less of that kind of radiation here uh, under the glass, we have less photochemistry, and the VOCs can last longer in the atmosphere. This means that we can, uh, again, have an easier time studying these compounds that can sometimes be found at parts per billion or even parts per trillion levels. The third factor that is really unique to this facility is that we have complete control. We can decide which climate this forest experiences. We can decide what temperature uh, regime, which precipitation regime, what humidity, and we can even modify the chemistry of this atmosphere to serve our experimental goals. And so this is a really unique capability that we can use at Biosphere 2 that is not available to us in the natural world. And so we're planning in this campaign to look not only at sort of the control conditions, but also understand how does VOC cycling change under drought. 
So we're really excited to have some fantastic research uh, come out of the Biosphere 2 rainforest uh, in the coming uh, months and years. And um, with these insights, we hope to inspire, uh, not only increase our understanding of rainforest, carbon cycling, and other factors, but also inspire new research questions, create very targeted hypotheses, um, and targeted experiments that we can perform in the real world where we have much less control over the environment, where the signals can be weaker, and where it costs a lot of money to go to some of these remote uh, locations in order to conduct tropical uh, rainforest research, unless we're lucky enough to live in one of those places. So um, with that, I'd really like to thank you for tuning in to Biosphere 2 Live uh, this week. Um, I would love to hear your comments and questions uh, we're uh, really excited for um, your continued interest in, in the rainforest, and it, it's sort of a living laboratory for us all to think about some interesting uh, science to conduct. Uh, so that's all for me. Again, my name is Dr. Laura Meredith, the Director of Research, Rainforest Research at Biosphere 2, and uh, we'll hope to see you next week. Thanks for tuning in.